Good morning to you all out there. I hope uh, there's a number of you viewing our worship experience this morning and being a part of this. Um, this is our second Sunday after Easter, uh, of Easter. And uh, my name is Pastor Roger Behrens, and we are here at Bethany Lutheran Church to provide you the message, the Word of God this day. I'm uh, assisted by my humble assistant, Vicki, as well as Francis over on the organ and piano. And I hope that this is a meaningful experience for you. Um, I wanted you to focus a little bit on, is it okay for us to question? Today's gospel story is one that we always hear right after Easter, of course, according to the Revised Common Lectionary, the, the lesson of Doubting Thomas. And the person who questions, is it okay for us to question? And I think today is a day that I would invite you all to reflect on that, to reflect on what our doubts and what our fears can be, may be, and or are. And then where is the grace of God in the midst of our doubts? and fears, the one who truly frees us from all of our burdens and questions. Now as we go through our worship time today, I want to tell you that we're going to have a guest preacher today. Yeah, a guest preacher. So you won't have to hear from me, so you, maybe you'll want to stay on and listen to what that's all about. So um, I invite you to sit back. Hopefully you all received your bulletin. Uh, we do have it out on Facebook, on a Facebook link, on our Bethany Lutheran Church page, as well as I sent it out to all of those email addresses uh, for, the, from the, for the people that I know. So if you didn't, uh, look on our Facebook page and you can receive it there. Otherwise, message in your chat box and maybe somebody can email it to you quickly. So once again, my name is Roger Behrens. I ask that you... Now sit back and prepare for worship and let's listen to the and reflect upon the prelude that Francis will provide for us this morning.
Please join me in the call to worship. Come, bless the Lord, in whom we find our refuge and safety. You are our God. All the good things come from you alone. Come, bless the Lord, who gives us a rich inheritance and surrounds us with abundance. You are our God. Our lives are in your hands. Come, bless the Lord, who guides us on the path to eternal life, whose presence strengthens and sustains us. You are our God. We will not be shaken. Let us worship God together. Now, brothers and sisters, let's join together in our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in singing our gathering hymn this morning, Come, You Faithful, Raise the Strain, number 363, from our Red Hymn.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and, and also, also with, with you. you. from the book of Acts, and no, it is not Pentecost yet, but 
This is a wonderful story. It's, narrated, it's a narrated story of God's mighty acts among early communities of believers soon after the death of Jesus Christ. God promised to pour out God's Spirit without favoritism in the last days, and God did so with the aggression to a bunch of fearful disciples gathered in a second-story room, secluded and locked away. Now today isn't about Pentecost. We will save that for another day, but in this first sermon, preached by Peter after Jesus' death to the people, he uses words of their ancestor David from Psalm 16, which we'll also hear in a moment, to tell the story of what God has done through Jesus Christ. God fulfilled the promises made to David. Let's listen. A reading from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, and you yourselves know this man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law, but God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand, but I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, may I say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would one, put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and all of that, all of us, are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm 16, we read responsibly. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all others. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord, who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see a bit. You will show me that the path of life, in your presence, there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forever. So it's children's time, and I hope there's some young folks out there, or some young at heart. So I have a great trick in store for you today. So our gospel lesson is is about where to find hope. How do we find hope? So I wanted, you guys all know how to tie your two shoes, I am sure, but I kind of wanted to show you a little bit of what I learned. So, you know, you can remember tying your shoes and it kind of looked like this, right? 
you got a little shoestring here, but I'll tell you, sometimes your shoes would come untied, or worse yet, we would have a little struggle, a little struggle to where our shoes would get in a knot. So see that knot? I mean, it's a knot. Oh my gosh. And you know, in our gospel reading, we hear, we hear a story from Thomas. He's one of the disciples. And he doubted whether he, could, he couldn't buy into this concept of Jesus was raised from the dead just yet because he did not get to see with his own eyes. So he was very troubled. All the disciples were kind of locked in this room in fear. It's kind of like our lives sometimes. We feel a little locked up right now too, don't we? Locked in our homes, struggling, and sometimes with the unknowns, we get tied up in knots. You know, our stomach doesn't feel well. Life is hard, we're troubled. And now we got this big old knot, we can't get it out. But you know what happens? Just like what happens in our gospel reading, Jesus shows up. Jesus came into that room where the disciples were hanging out in fear, where their tum tummies were a little bit knotted up, just like this rope that I have. And you know what Jesus says to the, the, to the disciples who are all stressed out? He says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And guess what happens when Jesus shows up and shares peace with us? Peace can, <laughs> my, my trick didn't work, but my knot got stronger. It was supposed to disappear, don't worry. But I will make that work better some other day. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what I did. So let me, I'm gonna try it all again, and we're gonna do this one more time. So, so just like this knot, Jesus gets a little, oops, that, now I don't have enough strength. So let me show you this again. I practiced this a lot, so my apologies, because I had this all figured out. Now let me get it tied, right? That's a little away from that knot, but it's kind of right there. So let me try it again. So now we can tie it all together. We, we get it all tightened up. But with Jesus, when he says, peace be with you, our knot Yay. is disappeared, freed. <laughs> so let's not ask about this knot. Let's talk about this one over here. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for giving us peace. For in all we say and in all we do, when we're struggled, when we're having a hard time, we know that you are there and you are there for us always. In your name we pray. Amen. And now all of you folks out there, let us bless our children as we bless them every Sunday. Children of God, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. So now I invite you all to stand for our gospel acclamation. Gives us Christians 
a way to tell the story to the world of how God shows up. Now in this story today, we hear the fourth resurrection report according to the Gospel of John. The first story we receive from Mary Magdalene who discovers the empty tomb, which we knew about and heard about last week. Followed by the two disciples who ran to the tomb just to see that there was no body there. But it is the third report from something a woman says that prepares us for this week's witness to the res resurrection. As that woman, Mary Magdalene, comes back and tells the disciples, I have seen the Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The reading from John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples rejoiced, or then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, Jesus said to them again, Peace. Be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them. When Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Thomas, come put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now, brothers and sisters, I would like to introduce to you our guest preacher this morning and share with you words from our very own Bishop John Mockholtz. Bishop John was uh, very gracious to have given us uh, this kind of a week off, if you will. Uh, he prepared a message for the whole Synod and has shared this message for all pastors to use on this Sunday, kind of giving us a, a freedom, if you will, from preaching and uh, preparing a message. So let's hear words from our bishop. Good morning. I'm Bishop John Mockholtz, and it is a pleasure and delight to be with you this morning, the second Sunday of Easter, as we continue our celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Recently, I came across an article by a Reverend Susan Sparks, a stand-up comedian and the senior pastor of Madison Avenue Baptist Church in New York City. She writes as follows. I returned from a trip to the Holy Land, Memphis, Tennessee, 
Now, Memphis is Holy Land for a number of reasons, not the least of which is their barbecue. For those of you who are not Southerners, please understand that barbecue is a holy thing. In fact, it is part of what we call the Southern Trinity. Barbecue, basketball, and the Bible. Memphis is known for their barbecue, especially their ribs. And as my neighbor used to say, good ribs will make an angel weep. Now, barbecue is not the only reason Memphis is considered the Holy Land. The primary reason, of course, is because it's the home of Elvis. While we were in Mel Memphis, we visited Sun Records where Elvis recorded his first song. In the studio, there was an X marked on the floor with duct tape indicating the exact spot where he stood. The tour guide there told us that just the week before, Bob Dylan had come into the studio, said not a word to anyone, walked over to the X, got down on all fours, kissed it, and walked out. For many, Elvis has achieved a holy status. In fact, there have been studies on the parallels between Jesus and Elvis, most notably by the renowned scholar and stand-up comedian, Adam Sandler. He explains, Jesus said, love your neighbor. Elvis sang, don't be cruel. Jesus is part of the Trinity. Elvis's first band was a trio. Jesus is the Lord's shepherd. Elvis dated Sybil Shepherd. Given that kind of reverence, I believe that we as Jesus fans have a lot to learn from Elvis fans, especially in terms of faith. Like any good pilgrims, she continues, we took time on our Memphis trip to visit the shrine of Graceland. There was a great welcome sign, a 25 foot high Elvis saying, welcome to Blingdom. And after the requisite photographs, we got in line for tickets. As we were waiting, I turned to one of the tour guides and said, how long did Elvis actually live here? There was an audible gasp from the surrounding crowd. The guide looked at me with shock and whispered, we don't use the past tense here. She then pointed to her t-shirt, which read, Graceland, where Elvis lives. It didn't matter that she had never actually seen Elvis or that technically Elvis stopped walking the face of this earth a long, long time ago. It didn't matter. And she didn't care. Elvis fans don't care. Without any proof, they believe he lives. Elvis lives, baby. The king lives. It's a shame we don't all live our lives with that kind of faith, she concludes. I'm afraid that most of us tend toward the disciple Thomas than the tour guide at Graceland. On that first night of the week, with the disciples gathered behind locked doors, the risen Christ appeared to them and said, peace be with you. Then he showed them his hands and his side, marked by the nails driven through them to hold him to the cross. Then the disciples believed. Thomas was not there, but the following Saturday Sunday night, as the day drew to a close, he was gathered with the other disciples and Jesus appeared, offering his hands and his side to Thomas alone, who, without touching either, proclaimed, my Lord and my God. And Jesus' response, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Before we are too hard on Thomas, maybe we need to admit to ourselves that he is us, or we are him, each and every one of us. We are often riddled with doubt and driven by fear, not sure at times what to believe, or for that matter, who to believe anymore. 
Unlike the disciples of Elvis, we struggle to keep the risen Christ alive in our own lives, much less the lives of others. We seek proof in order to believe. Conspiracy theorists still argue that the first manned moon landing was a governmental hoax. There are those today who believe that this pandemic was the creation of the Democratic Party. And there are those who will go to any length to prove their point, whatever it might be, and however outrageous it might appear to others. The proof that you and I seek people of God will not be found behind closed doors, locked and safe for the night. It will be discovered out in the world where we will experience the actions of the resurrection present in the lives of others. It will be found where hope is renewed, where healing takes place and where forgiveness is offered. Resurrection will be witnessed in places where faithful and critical thinking that engages in compassionate and intentional conversation and actions take place instead of irrational responses grounded in fear and doubt. Resurrection will be lived out when we are able to greet one another in a peace that is rooted in the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus, the one who was and is and is to come. The Trinity we confess, not barbecue the Bible and basketball, but creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, works within you and me to continue to deepen our faith and drive out fear that keeps us from believing and living like people of the resurrection. In those moments of doubt, during those times of questioning and confusion which we all experience, the risen Christ comes to us, not to scold or reprimand us, but rather to remind us and to renew us. In fact, Jesus invites our questions and concerns, our doubts and our fears, and uses those moments and times to remind us of his life, death, and resurrection for us and for our salvation. He helps us to recall the extraordinary love of the Father in the giving of his only begotten Son. And when we next gather at the table, wherever and whenever that may be, he will invite us to come to eat and drink and receive the forgiveness that is ours, given and shed for us. This, my sisters and brothers in Christ, is the true Graceland. In these challenging days and times, Graceland is discovered when we gather even a while apart to hear the word proclaimed, forgiveness spoken, baptism remembered, and grace shared. It is the place where we come to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It is the space where our songs are not Don't Be Cruel or Heartbreak Hotel. Rather, they are filled with language that is alive and vibrant and exciting. Words of resurrection, promise and hope. Phrases and images of new life, which is yours and mine in Christ our Lord. Bring to this Jesus, this resurrected Christ, your doubts, your questions, your longings. In those moments, he will remind you that he is in your midst, behind your locked doors, into what you perceive the darkness of your life to be, and he will bring light and hope and peace. Celebrate Thomas. No, better yet, live like Thomas. Ask the hard questions. Question the realities. Wonder in the midst of your wandering. Then, when you see clearly the reality of love witnessed in Christ's death and resurrection, offer up these words and profession of faith that Thomas taught us. My Lord and my God. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Mockholtz, for sharing that message with us 
so that we, number one, get to see your face and, and know that you are partnered with us in this ministry that so many of us out here strive to make happen each and every day. Um, it is a blessing to have your word in our midst today. And it's really the grace of God that comes through it all. For he has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. So now we will continue with our hymn of the day, O Sons and Daughters, Let Us Sing. Number 386 in your red hymnal. But we're going to change it up just a little bit. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, 6, and 8. We are not going to sing verse 4 as it's listed there. Now keep in mind, when you sing this, we'll sing that first line, Hallelujah. And then we will sing all four of the verses, and then we will finish up with the last line of Alleluia at the end. Let's sing.
Open the doors we close, O oh God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Open the paths that we ignore, O oh God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made so that living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts and minds of this faith community, O oh God, as we journey through these troubling times. Give us guidance and strength to accept the limitations put upon us, knowing that through it all, you are with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the rooms that we lock, O oh God, to those who live without a homeland or place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts that we tend to close, O oh God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically, emotionally. Whether it's through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, or the coronavirus, and all of those who are, who are in need. Especially today, we lift up Maggie Davies, Rachel Holmes, Jennifer Brown, Keith Vaughn, Carrie Sutton, Betty Franey, Sarah Bush, Joe Brannon and Josh, Brittany and Josh Hurd, Mary DeRocher, Hudson Weigel, Diane Wilbur, Dawn Thomas, Mike Malone, Doris Hand, Melissa Winslow, Jennifer Versiglio, Jody Crosby Paglia, Bill McLaughlin, Dennis Woodard, Denise Woodard, Eleanor Peterson, Stephen Bramble, Bill Jewett, Julie Harrison, Josh Wiles, Laney, Christine Brady, Joe Fanticone, Norm Peterson, David Hoffmeyer, Bob Lay, Julie Doherty, Owen Xavier, Nancy Lindholm, Ruth Walworth, Sarah Young, Alan Swanson, May Wieselmeyer, and our brothers and sisters who are suffering from the coronavirus and those we also name aloud or within the quiets of our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world and bless the efforts of all who care for of us in this world, missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, relief workers, and all who dedicate their life to the service of others and at times find themselves in harm's way. Especially today, we lift up our service members of Christopher Behrens, Angie Garland, Chase Hartke, Dylan Hornbeck, Jeffrey Kuhn, Warren Kuhn. Michael McCann, Eric Mur Murphy, Robert Shamel, Logan Soule, Ryan Taylor, Eric Wiremiller, and all those in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death, that we embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also, and also with you. Let us please sign and share a sign of peace with one another out there in your homes whether you type into the bottom of Facebook and share peace with others. Blessings to you.
God's peace to you all. And peace to you, my dear Francis. And now it is our time and grace and peace to you all from this house of faith. We will be again, want to get, want to be together one day soon, uh, but uh, let us not push it. So now as we prepare for our time of offering, we just want this a, as a moment of self-reflection and, and thinking about all of our brothers and sisters of faith not only in our, in our own community, but communities afar, who are worshiping virtually in different ways. Be with us all as we go through this time of, of unprecedented uh, moments and how we have to do something new, but we're making it work. So as you think about this, let us uh, reflect in some music that Francis will share with us as we move forward. So and now we sing our canticle of thanksgiving um, together, but we, I really wanted to mention how blessed this congregation um, is because there has been so many offerings and uh, well wishes being sent to the church uh, that is helping our financial status be maintained over time. So I thank you for your continued commitment to the Word of God through this place. Let us sing our canticle of thank you.
No thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. O God of justice, love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our ways through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So a couple of announcements as we move forward in our week. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, talk in the news about we kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I really want to, you know, those are kind of our news snippets. But the bottom line is, is our leadership, uh, our governmental leadership is still asking us to maintain uh, separation and social distancing. And I invite you to please Stay safe out there. Um, while these words of returning to normalcy gives us hope, that's all it is. Um, because we don't want to increase the numbers that seem to be decreasing right now. So let us stay the course uh, in this time of separation. There is a council meeting this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, we are doing it by Zoom. Of course, remember that our council meetings are open to all. So if you desire to be a part of this, reach out to me and I'll send you the Zoom contact information so that you can reach out and be a part of our uh, virtual council meeting. Uh, I will this week have open office hours on Tuesday and Thursday as well, as we will continue our Wednesday morning Bible study as well at 11 a.m. So if there's anybody out there that needs to speak with me, um, I am kind of getting back on my horse again after Holy Week and Easter to try to start making some more calls. I did a little bit of that yesterday, but I hope to do a little better job of reaching out to you all over the upcoming weeks. That's all I have. If there's any special announcements that's out there in the community, please uh, type them into our Facebook page and we will make sure that we get them moving forward. I do know that uh, the Southern Tier Food Pantry is always in need. Um, our food pantry has not been used a great deal at all over the last couple of weeks, which uh, I'm not sure what that means to us, but uh, keep in mind that there are needs out there in this community, so let us continue to do our part as good neighbors and serve. Now let me, let, let's uh, go forth with the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill, with, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, our sending hymn, is I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, number 815.
please stay on as we listen to our prelude. But until we meet again, go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. God.